Hey, what's up, fellas? What we're looking at right here is some old footage of the banjo burner because I wanted to show you guys how much fuel it's actually burning in a very small space. All I'm doing right here is turning the blower on and off. The fuel valve is remaining constant. So this is how much fuel the banjo burner is able to burn in a very small area. And as a result of that, it packs quite the punch, not just because of the huge amount of fuel that it's burning in a small space, but because of the reflective infrared energy coming off of the bottom of the burner plate. It gives this thing a power that is unmatched by any burner I have ever seen. This thing can boil an entire garbage can full of water in ways I've never seen water boil before. It's pretty phenomenal, and a lot of that is coming from the reflective IR energy. Not all of it, but that's definitely what gives this thing an edge above just a regular burner. Problem is, a couple of people have asked for a liquid fuel system, and the damn thing wouldn't burn liquid for me the other day. I was kind of freaking out. I spent about 22 hours putting this thing together, and there was a lot of equipment and metal wrapped up in this also. So quite a bit of money we're looking at right here, and the damn thing didn't work at all. It's just uh, smoking like crazy. So we had to pull a rabbit out of the hat there and think outside the box. We put a distribution plate on there. I'm calling this the consolidation plate. And I didn't even have to use my AK. Damn, that's a good thing. So I got lucky on this one, guys. I didn't have to do too much. So what we're doing is fabricating a bolt-on consolidation plate that's going to take some of the flame heat from the spouts that are working properly and distribute it to the areas where we're getting unburned fuel being shuttled out the top of the burner plate there. So we had to uh, make a completely different plate this is what we got here. So this way also, if it burns up over time, another one can just be bolted right on there. And um, man, did I get lucky, because it definitely saved the day. I'm using a propane assist ignition on this thing because for whatever reason, the spark plug will not ignite the diesel fumes. I think my spark's just a little too cold. I'm using a Honeywell electric circuit for igniting furnaces and the spark just isn't very hot. It's made for igniting natural gas. So it's not a very brutal uh, ignition system. I'm working on that. I got some parts on the way. But nonetheless, we were able to achieve complete smoke-free combustion. This thing isn't even heated up yet. We are also going to be testing the fuel-free heat today. We have a 300 watt heater probe inside that uh, galvanized steel nipple you see there. And we're getting ready to turn that up right now. We're starting off at an ambient temperature of 60 degrees on that uh, fuel preheater. And we're going to see if we can get some blue flame out of this thing. It definitely seems to improve combustion quite a bit. Just There's absolutely no free. smoke. We are home no free at this point. I'm no longer freaking out worried that this thing ain't going to work like I was the other day. It's working phenomenal. This is going to boil a beer keg full of water, basically. We're going to be using a beer keg for the boiler. And this thing will be powering that, and the residual heat is going to be used to power an autoclave. Right about 144 watts of input power on the fuel free heat. I keep it right around 130 degrees towards the end of the video here. That seemed to be doing just great. The fact that we're not getting any smoke now is just phenomenal. I'm so happy that uh, I don't have to scrap this thing. Went ahead and turn the power up on the preheat a little bit. I just feel like 130 watts is quite enough. Believe it or not, the energy density of diesel fuel is higher than that of waste oil. Because if we were doing waste oil right now, this thing would be running a little bit hotter. Some of that little bit of puffs of smoke we see is coming from steam from the refractory. We're running around 250 to 500 PSI. Towards the middle of the video here, I pushed it up to 500 PSI and leave it there. We're using a pressure washer pump with a bypass valve system to run the proper flow rate and pressure that we're looking for. 
And here we are at 130 degrees of fuel preheat, and the performance is phenomenal. We're not getting the blue flame that I was hoping we would achieve, but nonetheless, it's right on the verge of turning blue. We are right, you can subtly see a little bit of hint of blue just starting to form there. So, I definitely got lucky on this one, guys. I almost thought I was gonna have to build a pre-burner and simply use this as a heat distribution. We do need to insulate that area right there up just a little bit. We're right around 700 to 900 degrees right there. Actually, that's about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, on that red hot zone that we were just looking at. It's broad daylight out, so it may be a little brighter than that in all reality. But uh, here's just a far off clip to show that we are, in fact, not producing any smoke. Man, is my fuel tank dirty. It's at the bottom of the tank, and I just shook it up, and you can see all this gunk flowing through. That appears to be a glob of water mixed with dirt and oil. I don't know what that is, but here in a second, we'll see it just kind of rolling along in the tube, almost like one of those little videos you see of, on the inside of a human cell. What do they call that thing? Uh, look at that thing just rolling in there. Nuts. So you definitely gotta have a fuel filter on these systems. I don't know that this one's good enough, but I just wanted to show you guys the fuel rate or the fuel consumption right here. Quite a bit of power. This thing has to also heat a large Connex box up to 160 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. It's gonna be running a giant autoclave. This will be positioned under a boiling tank of water to provide the steam, but the residual heat will be used to heat the Connex.